A court appearance today for the officer who shot Dante Wright as protests continue over his death. About two dozen people were arrested in Brooklyn Center after the curfew began. Kim Potter, the former officer who shot Dante Wright, will face a judge this afternoon. She has been charged with second degree manslaughter and is out on bail. We have learned that Dante Wright's funeral will be held at George Floyd Square. We are still waiting to learn when it will happen. Now, overall, authorities say that the fourth night of protests, they were calmer, even though emotions are still running high. For the second night in a row, officials say there was no looting, no fires in Brooklyn Center, Minneapolis or St. Paul. But last night in Brooklyn Center, after a few dispersal orders, police pushed in full force and the crowds quickly scattered. State Patrol estimates about 500 people were outside the police department last night when the curfew fell. They say that the crowd started pulling on the fencing, launched industrial sized fireworks at police and threw things at them like bricks and cans. Marielle Mose is live this morning at the Brooklyn Center Police Department where very much quieter this morning, Marielle. Yeah, Heather, it's a lot quieter and all the debris and litter that was left over from last night's protest was cleaned up by the city of Brooklyn Center about an hour ago. However, the barricades still remain around the police department and the National Guard presence is still here. Now, as you mentioned, looking ahead to today, former officer Kim Park Potter is expected to make her first court appearance this afternoon. She's been charged with second degree manslaughter. It comes after she shot and killed 20 year old Dante Wright Sunday during a traffic stop. The 48 year old officer was taken into custody yesterday by the Minnesota BCA and booked into Hennepin County Jail before being released after posting bail. For as far as the manslaughter charge goes, it is defined by Minnesota law as when someone acts with negligence, creating an unreasonable risk that causes death or great bodily harm. And I think the, the, the probability of death or great bodily harm is pretty apparent on its face. I mean, firing a gun, mistaking it for your taser, as I think they're claiming, is pretty clear, especially it, from the video that I saw. She was, you know, two, you know, two to three feet away. The manslaughter charge doesn't require any sort of intentional conduct. It doesn't require that she intended to cause the death, that, that you know, she intended to fire the gun, um, but just that through her negligence, this thing happened. Now, if found guilty, Potter could face up to 10 years in prison. She's expected to make her first court appearance at 1.30 this afternoon, and that'll be virtually over Zoom. All right, Marielle, thank you. Attorney Ben Crump is representing the family of Dante Wright, and Reverend Al Sharpton is organizing the funeral. They reacted to the criminal charges against former officer Potter. It boggles the mind why she would pull him over in the first place. Or is it the rules are set aside when you are really being targeted for driving while black? Manslaughter 2 is the least she should get. Mm -hmm. The least, yep. possibly more. Around Kim Potter's home in Champlin, the streets are lined with everything from barricades to no parking signs put up by police. Officers have also ramped up neighborhood patrols. Those who live nearby tell us that so far things have been quiet. People who live near the Brooklyn Center Police Department say they're getting caught in the crossfire between protesters and police. When asked about it, the state patrol said this. I have not spoken to anybody who lives in those apartments, and I'm going to circle back to what has been brought up before by the commissioner and others. This is a residential area where this riotous behavior is occurring. While authorities fire off tear gas and rubber bullets to clear crowds after curfew, those who live nearby are left to deal with the ripple effects from feeling constantly on edge to the chemicals seeping into their homes. The residents say they're fed up. We're not comfortable in our own house. We are coughing all the time. Um, no peace, loud noise all day, every day. Brooklyn Center's mayor says the city is working with community organizations to offer relief to the people who live in nearby apartments.